All right, move on. Governor, uh, it was almost four years ago to the day that we did an interview as you were getting ready to begin this, the upcoming four years. Now that you look back, um, what's the last week been like? Has it been tough to think about the end coming or are you relieved no. that it's finally here? Did I tell you four years ago to buckle up? I probably did or something like that. It's been a crazy four years and a good four years. If you remember what we ran on, you remember the blueprint for a better Kentucky. Everything that I said that I was going to strive to get done, right to work, school choice, repealing prevailing wage, paycheck protection, pension reform, tax reform, shrinking the size of government, regulatory reform, every one of these things was a, was a, a third rail politically. And yet we ran on all these things. And so as I am now in the last days of those four years, I'm just grateful for how much of that we've gotten done. It's more than anybody believed would be possible. You talked about the dangers that would come with facing those things. Sure. You only got four years in office. Yeah. Was it smart to do those things? Absolutely. Because, I mean, I could have gotten hit by a bus the fourth day I was in office. These people who try to build a political career are not doing right by America. People should go into elected office and do the right thing with a sense of urgency and a sense of conviction. Don't try to do everything safely so that you can just keep hanging around. We have enough people in politics that just hang around. I want people that do stuff with our taxpayer money. And I look at what we've gotten done. We got more done in four years than had been done in 20 years, any 20 years in the history of this state. I've been here for the last four years uh, covering it, and I've been there through some of those times where yeah. people in your own uh, administration probably had to buckle up because they didn't know what was going to happen next. Yeah, no, I mean... That the, the day that we stood out on the steps of the Capitol had become a, a viral situation. When you look back on that a couple of years ago, talking about the teachers, yeah. what do you think about that? I know you've told me in the past I wasn't that talking about remember. teachers at all. And this is, again, the, the important thing to understand. I was talking about what happens in that case when children are left home unattended. This is a big problem in America. And so again, people, we live in a world where people are hypersensitive and willing to be offended by any number of things and to conflate things that are said into, in, and to assume that they are meant as personal attacks, not at all. I think the reason people were as offended as they were is because they know the truth of that. When children are left home alone, bad things happen. There's no question at all. We've talked even in the last couple of weeks since the election, and, and even before that, you, you've told me in the past, you don't look back, no regrets, you don't look back, yeah. you only look forward. Have you, do you still feel that way as you, can, as you get ready to leave yeah. office? Of course. What do you look back on that you think is one of the most important impacts that you'll leave on the state? We've shown people what good government looks like. We've moved this state forward instead of backwards or sideways, and we've done it without any corruption. Not one university board seat was sold for a cash donation to a political campaign. Every single one of them was sold by the previous administrations before me, and certainly the vast majority of them. Not one state contract was sold for cash like previous administrations have done. The people that came here are all still here. The people, the cabinet secretaries, you've covered politics in different states. It's unprecedented, the level of stick to because why these people are competent and committed. So I think the best legacy we've given Kentucky is to show them what good government looks like. I tweeted on the day that you conceded the race that the, some of your staffers were in the hallways with tears in their eyes or their eyes welling with tears. And I pointed out the fact that over the four years, those people were fiercely loyal to you. There were not a yeah. lot of leaks coming out of your office, and there were no leaks that came None. out of your office yeah. that created a major headline. Yeah, because you know why? Because these people are professionals. They're not a bunch of political hacks. These were people who came here to serve the people of Kentucky at expense to themselves. And the sadness that they felt was about the sadness of being a part of the best team that any of us have been a part of. I've never worked with a more competent group of men and women, more singularly focused on a common mission, and that is every single day to do the right thing for the people of Kentucky. And your eyes well a little bit when I bring that up. Yeah. Pride from your end that you had those people oh. who were fiercely loyal to you? It has had nothing to do with their loyalty to me. It was my loyalty to them. That's what makes me emotional. I'll tell you what, I love this team. These men and women, there, there literally has never been an administration in Kentucky history as competent, as committed, as dedicated as the men and women who have served this state for the last four years. On it's an honor to be a small part of that, I'll tell you. On the other side of the aisle, there were tears of joy when you were defeated. 
And so you have these people who feel so strongly one way or the other about you. What do you make of that? We'll see what they feel in four years. I mean, here's what I know. We, every single economic record that you could ever want to attain has been set and established in this last four years. Highest number of people working in the history of the state. Highest per capita income ever in history, including for the last four years, per capita income growing in Kentucky faster than in any of the states around us for the first time ever in history. Most capital ever invested in the state, record levels of exports, every single metric, all at the same time. I can only hope and pray that we'll continue this kind of trajectory. Some of those people who dislike you say the same things about you that they've said about the President of the United States. And people yeah. have compared you to the way that you came in office, the way that the President of the United States came into office. Do you take that as a compliment? And for those who question whether the President is forthright, do you? Do you I mean, let me just that? say this. I, I, I remind people who got elected first. I got, I got elected while he had never been elected to anything. So I love how people say you're trying to copy him. Well, maybe it's the other way around. Here's the thing. I have a lot of respect for him because you know what? The Where we do have commonality is we both said we're going to do certain things and then we actually do them or attempt to do them. It's very unusual in politics and it makes people's heads explode. There's people who can't handle it. And it doesn't matter their ideology. There's Republicans and Democrats alike who don't like to do anything in elected office. They want to just keep getting reelected. I don't have time. I'm not interested enough in politics to just sit around and twiddle my thumbs. Have you heard from the president since you lost? Oh, yeah. I've, what, I talk what did to he him. say to you? I speak to him and the vice president fairly regularly and to multiple cabinet secretaries. We, we talk about things that matter to this state, that, that talk to, about things that matter uh, to this country. Uh, this, these people are good friends and professional allies of Kentucky and of, of any taxpayer in America. The election results come out and then his campaign sends out a statement that to many read like they were throwing you under the bus. Yeah. Did you I take mean, that as an insult no. from his campaign? I mean, this is politics. How could you not take that as oh, an come insult on. from his campaign? It's, it's, because it's because of the last several words of that sentence. From his what? His campaign. Exactly. I mean, come on. The world of politics is full of nonsense. It's the silly season when people are running. You think about this. He's not tweeting this stuff out. It's stuff that his campaign manager sent out. And Brad's he a good guy. He said he almost dragged you across the finish Brad, line. Exactly, exactly. Brad was saying that too. I mean, Brad's a good guy. Brad's sharp. And I, I think the president's going to win. They're a good team. I don't, it, doesn't, it doesn't bother me. Like, so you're going to go work for him? I, I'll tell you what. I, could you, I mean, it, working in this town is crazy enough. I can't even imagine working in that town. I love so, the private sector. We'll see. So the future will take care of itself. I've talked to some Republican strategists and some Republican lawmakers, and I know you will smile when I say that because you don't like hearing what those people's opinions are all of the time. I love but, everyone's opinion. So, I've me? learned that yeah. over the last yeah. four years love on it. multiple occasions. But many of them have questioned, you still have a few weeks before the deadline, will you run against Mitch McConnell in the primary? Oh my goodness. If, if I had a nickel for everything that people think I should do with my life, every office I should run for, that's not on my agenda, no. There's about 100 things I might do. That's not one of the top 100. Let's put it that way. So It might be 101. I don't know. I haven't got that far down my list. And without giving me the patented answer of playing hoops in the, or playing basketball or preparing for your daughter's wedding, what will you do next? Again, we'll see. They're literally, the great thing about America is there's any number of things. There are needs for things politically, both in this state and, and, and nationally, and globally for that matter. There's things in the for-profit world. There's things in the non-profit world. There's a lot of things that are of interest to me. I'm curious about many, many things. I read a lot. I'm involved in many things. And uh, I'll let the future take care of itself. I'm not too concerned about it. Nucor was one of your, your proudest moments that you were able it's to help company. bring in this in there. And in the last couple of days, I've reported on the questions about the grain elevator there closing yeah. on January 31st. Did you have any idea that that was going to happen? Or what are your thoughts on the fact that the grain elevator is going to close? And the farmers in the surrounding counties are now concerned about losing a lot of money because oh. there's not been a solution brought in. They'll, they'll, they'll get it solved. Because trust me, where there's a need to get goods to market, there will be a solution. That grain elevator, that's, that's nothing new at all. That was always right in the middle of this 900-acre site. From before they even agreed to come and build, that was already the plan. It was going to have to move. It's literally right in the middle of where this plant is going to be built. So that's actually remarkably old news. That's, it's been known to the state and to the people at Nucor that that was going to move for 
at least a year. I mean, farmers say they just learned in the last couple of months and then they yeah. just learned recently that it's going to close. So it's new news to them. Yeah, again, there's other places to go to market. I mean, there's no guarantee that you just because you drive in the same direction every day that suddenly you don't have to turn in a different direction to get what you need. I mean, I, I don't know what the solution will be. I really don't. But I know this, if there are goods to be brought to market, there will be people that will help them make it happen. In the end of all this, and midnight on Monday night into Tuesday morning, you will no longer officially be the governor. How will you be remembered, and, and how do you want to be remembered? And are they the same thing? I, I'll let history take care of that. I, don't, I literally don't think about those things or worry about them. I really don't. What I know we have done that I feel good about is that we've done the things we ran on, we have done all or part of every single thing that was in my blueprint for a better Kentucky. And we have shown the people of Kentucky what good ethical government looks like, where you're not partying on the taxpayer's money, where you're not boondoggling, you're not selling seats, you're not allowing people to spike their pensions. And I would say to this incoming administration, they should have enough class and respect for the taxpayers to do what everyone coming into this administration did. If you're eligible to retire, retire before you take your position in this administration. Don't spike your, spent your pension and feather your own nest on the taxpayer's dime. When you walk away after the good blood and the bad blood and things that have happened over the last four years, are you going to be able to walk away and not be involved or will you stay involved? Will you tweet about things that you see going on? Will you tweet about the incoming governor? And what happens down the road with him? I mean, again, I don't. Here's the thing. It'll be his job to, to run with things and to do as best he can uh, what is necessary to bring Kentucky forward. And I want to see that happen. I've been very clear in all my comments, in my conversations with him and about him and about this incoming administration. Our work with the transition team is we're making sure that they are going to be positioned to do everything well. If you remember, uh, his father took a very different approach. He would set up little press conferences. They were kind of embarrassing and sad, frankly. He would bring in little flags. He'd go in like a, a room at a hotel and he'd set up little press conferences to, to call us out on stuff. And it was, it was silly and embarrassing. I would not hope to repeat that kind of silliness.